Hello, and welcome to your first introduction into the strange and wonderful world of p-adic numbers. Before we start working on p-adic numbers, however, we need to get a deeper understanding of how normal numbers work. The first notion of a number that people encounter is usually the counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, and so on. However, we soon realize that if we want subtraction, we need more numbers below 1, so we add 0, minus 1, minus 2, and so on. This allows subtraction, but what about division? Well, to allow division, we start working with fractions, 1 half, 1 fifth, and 3 quarters. Now comes the fork in the road, where the mainstream path leads us to the real numbers, and from there on towards the complex numbers. However, there is a lesser known path, a path shrouded in a mathematical mystery, that leads us into the fascinating world of the p-adic numbers. Let's understand the mainstream path first. So as we have seen, the previous paths have all been motivated by some kind of problem that needs solving. We needed the whole numbers to work out subtraction, and we needed the rational numbers to work out division. So what exactly is the problem that the real numbers solve? Well, you may have heard of it. It's limits. The limit is something that we apply to a sequence of numbers that get closer and closer together, and a real number is what all those numbers co converge towards. That is literally the definition of a real number. It's whatever some sequence converges towards. However, there is a very subtle choice here, one which you may not have spotted. And that choice is what gave us the real numbers instead of the p-adic numbers. Chapter 2. Distance. That choice is how we understand the concept of distance. The distance between two numbers is ordinarily just how far apart they are in the number line. 1 and 4 are 3 apart, for instance. But that is not the only way that things can be. The traditional way of understanding distance is just one of many. What if I told you that there is a certain sense in which 2 and 7 are 1 fifth apart, and 2 twenty fifths and 4 twenty fifths are 25 apart? How does this make sense? Well, this is what we get when we work at the so-called phi-adic distance. In the phi-adic world, the distance between two numbers is given by, just as in the normal world, the size of the difference between the numbers. The subtlety lies in how we define that size. In the normal world, the size of a number is just its value. In the phi-adic world, the size of a number is how few copies of 5 we find in its factorization. Precisely, if a number has three copies of 5 in its factorization, then we say that number has size 1 over 5 cubed. For example, 50 has two copies of 5 in it, so, th so 50 has size 1 over 25. 1 over 75 has minus two copies of 5, so 1 over 75 has size 25. Now, what is the five adic distance between 2 and 7? Well, 7 minus 2 is 5, which has one copy of 5, so 2 and 7 are one fifth apart. Chapter 3. p adic numbers. Now let's take a look at a strange kind of sequence. 4, 24, 124, 624, and so on. The pattern here is that each number is 1 less than 5 to the nth power. In the normal world, this clearly diverges. It shoots off to infinity. But in the five adic world, if we were to compute all the distances, we would see that these actually get closer and closer together. 24 minus 4 is 20, which is 5 adic size 1 fifth. 124 minus 24 is 100, which has size 1 over 25, and so on. The 5 adic distances get smaller and smaller. If we look very carefully, we can see that it actually gets closer and closer to minus 1. Go ahead, pause the video, and compute all the distances between the numbers in the sequence and minus 1. So that is what a 5 adic number is. It is the limit of a sequence that gets closer and closer with the 5 adic distance in mind. A p adic number is exactly the same, just with the prime number p instead of 5. So, what is a p adic number that a rational number is not? Well, first of all, it turns out all rational numbers are p adic numbers. But there are more p adic numbers that, so to speak, fill in the gaps between the rational numbers in the p adic distance sense. It is hard to give a concrete example of a p adic number that is not a normal number, just as it can be hard to give an example of a real number. This is because, to a certain extent, both p adic numbers and real numbers contain infinite information.
Just a single example actually contains more information than what the universe can hold, than what any finite universe could hold. However, just as in the case of the real numbers, square roots can provide us with examples. There is a certain sense in which the square root of 3 is a two-adic number. This is not the same as the normal square root of 3, it is a different kind of number which happens to have 3 as its square. Chapter 4. The square root of 2. Most people know that the square root of 2 is not a rational number, and many have even seen the quite nice proof of this. P-adic numbers can in fact be used to prove this as well. In particular, what we will show is that the square root of 2 is not a 2-adic number, and since all rational numbers are 2-adic, we can from there see that the square root of 2 is not a rational number. To show that the square root of 2 is not a 2-adic number, we can show that the equation x squared equals 2 does not have any solutions in the 2-adic numbers. We specifically want to look at how many factors of 2 each side of the equation has. Remember that this is how we define the size of a 2-adic number. The right hand side is simple, it clearly has one factor of 2. On the left hand side we need to understand how squaring a number changes its amounts of 2. Twos. If x has n factors of 2, then how many does x squared have? Well, x squared is just x times x, so its factors are precisely twice that of x. Since x had n factors of 2, then x squared has 2 n factors of 2. If both sides are equal, then the amounts of 2s on both sides must be equal, so we get 1 equal to 2n. However, n, the number of factors of 2, must clearly be an integer, meaning 1 equal 2n is impossible. This then proves that x squared equal 2 is impossible, which shows us that the square root of 2 is not a 2 adic number, and then not a rational number either. The p-adic numbers have many more applications, for instance the famous proof of Fermat's last theorem by Andrew Wiles. Thank you for the attention. I hope you learned something and leave a comment if you have any questions. Subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content and I hope to see you again.